The story of Pi from Pythagoras to Newton. The way we know Pi today has a long history dating back to thousands of years. The discoveries made by each of these single figures contributed to the building blocks of creating what we know as Pi today. So I present to you a quick historical buildup of how we discovered Pi. Around 500 BC, Pythagoras is credited for discovering the Pythagorean theorem. This is the relationship between the area of the squares on the legs of a right triangle equal to the area of the larger square on the hypotenuse. Around 300 BC, Euclid wrote the greatest geometry textbook of all time where in the first book he completely proved the Pythagorean theorem. This set a new standard in mathematics where math ideas needed to be proven so that it stood the test of time. Around 200 BC, Archimedes was the first to devise a precise method to find the value of pi. What Archimedes did was he inscribed a polygon inside a circle and outside the circle. He set the radius of the circle to be 1 half, making the perimeter of the circle set to pi. Finding the perimeter of a polygon could easily be found, so as the sides of the polygons increased, the closer it approximated the value of pi. Throughout the second millennium, changes in mathematics included the adoption of the decimal system that made making calculations easier. Various ideas in geometry were also soon translated into algebraic notation. Everything in Euclid's proof of the Pythagorean theorem was simply translated into the equation of a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Around the 1600s, René Descartes helped to completely combine geometry and algebra together using the Cartesian coordinate system. At the heart of this transformation is the Pythagorean theorem, because it is used to derive the distance formula. The formula is then used to derive the equations of the ellipse, the parabola, hyperbola, and the circle. One of the interesting developments in algebra was the binomial expansion. Euclid represented the first binomial expansion in geometric form. What algebra could do that ancient geometry could not was continue calculating the binomial expansion in higher dimensions. The predictable pattern in how the binomials expanded, along with Pascal's triangle, form what is known today as the binomial theorem. One thing to quickly note is the infinite series. This is an example of an infinite series. If you take a shape with a length of 1 and cut each piece in half repeatedly, it's going to represent the terms of the infinite series. Altogether, the area of the pieces is 1, so the infinite series converges to 1. We now arrive at Newton. Newton helped to develop calculus, but what is calculus? So all geometric curves can be represented by equations. If you differentiate the equation, you can get the equation of the tangent line to the curve. If you integrate an equation, you get the area bounded by the curve and the axis lines. Integration is what Newton used to find pi. Finally, we arrive at the form that Newton was able to calculate pi. Newton first used the equation of a circle with a radius of 1. He then solved for y. So the equation became y equals the square root of 1 minus x squared. What Newton did next was he applied the binomial expansion to the equation of a circle where the exponent is 1 half. This still represents the equation of the circle but in binomial form. Now when we take the integral of the equation, it now represents the area under the curve. To make this simple, let's just concentrate on the area between 0 and 1. So the area is just 1 fourth of the circle. Since the radius is 1, the area of this section is pi over 4. Now the amazing thing about this setup is that we can now solve for pi. We can calculate pi using the terms of the binomial expansion. The more terms we calculate, the closer we get to pi. This is similar to the infinite series, where if we have infinitely many terms, it is going to converge to pi. And this is how Newton calculated pi. Thousands of years of math development had to happen to arrive at this technique of calculating pi, which is why Newton is quoted as saying, if I have seen further than others, it is by standing upon the shoulders of giants. Thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe and check out my website, pythagoreanmath.com.